Today, Susanna joins the prank patrol. Her mission, to convince her best friend that he's involved in the development of a new cutting-edge computer game. But can she also convince him that she can disappear and become the invisible kid? This is Prank Patrol, where we help people like you pull off the prank of their lives. got to be our prankster. <laughs> Susanna Owen? Yep. Did you apply for Prank Patrol's help? Yep. Congratulations, you're the newest member. There's your jacket. Hi, cool. Dad. And this oh, is your pass to prank. Cool. Dad, I'm going to need it for a bit. Is that OK? Yep, we're great, yeah. Lovely. Susanna, follow me. No way. Oh. Meet our newest prankster, Susanna Owen from Stoke-on-Trent. She describes herself as cool, clever and nerdy in a good way. She loves computers, has been skateboarding since she was five and would love to be a guitarist when she's older. She's got a sister called Lindsay who argues with her about what's on the telly and a pet fish with no name. Hello, I've got no name. Welcome to the prank van. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Now listen, talk to me. Who do you want to prank? I'm pranking my friend Thomas. Your friend Thomas, okay, why? Um, he's always bragging all the time about the latest games, consoles and computer games he gets from Japan. He's a bit of a show off. Yeah. Okay then, um, what has he done to you? Um, when we play the football games on the computer, he always says that like, I might, you might as well just go get something to eat or have a drink, because he's so rubbish. <laughs> really? <laughs> Interesting. Well, listen, let's find out a bit more about Thomas before we talk about his prank. Here he is. Thomas always brags about having the latest computer game and always talks about them. He and Susanna love playing on the computer. Thomas is the best at the soccer game and always rubs Susanna's face in it. He says that he may as well play on his own and she should just watch. He's always winding up and used to say that he was a vampire. He once told Susanna that his pet hamster ate his Easter bunny that she gave him. <laughs> oh, what kind of excuse is that? A hamster eating the Easter bunny. Now listen, I can see why you want to prank him now. So uh, let's talk ideas. Have you had any? Yeah, I just want, really want to wind him up. You want to wind him up? Well, I'm sure the ninjas can rustle something up in that department. Uh, let's think about what we're going to do here. He likes computer games. You like computer games? Yep. OK, why don't we base our prank around something to do with that? You know, computer games or maybe um, future technology. OK. That's always a good one. Why don't we say that you and Thomas have been asked to help um, the, the development of, like, a, a new groundbreaking game? Oh, he'd really love that. He would? OK, well, how about we say that when you play this game, something happens to you. Um, maybe you get special powers or it makes you invisible. Can we actually do that? Well, no, we can't actually, actually do that. Um, I think she's been watching too much Prank Patrol. But we can make Thomas believe that he's invisible. The, the trick is... Uh, how we do that, you know? I mean, how would you make somebody think they're invisible? What about um, an invisibility suit? An invisibility suit, something that they wear that makes... Yeah, yeah, I quite like that. What we'd have to do, though, is, um, is get somebody to wear it first so that Thomas saw it in action, you know, so that he then believes that when he puts the suit on, he knows the same will happen to him. Well, who could that be? Well, you could do it. Yeah. Do you fancy that? If you, if yeah. you try the suit on first, and what we'll do is we'll rig the room so that certain objects just fall off the wall as if, you, as if you're actually grabbing them when you're invisible. We can do that. Um, we can sort that out at Prank HQ later. I know just the guy to deal with that. Um, and then when he puts the suit on, you can pretend that you can't see him. Bingo, he's invisible. Yeah, yeah? that sounds great. Let's crank the prank up one more notch, and we uh, pretend that because he's been messing about with the suit so much, he actually breaks this priceless piece of kit. How are we going to do that? Smoke. You just put a bit of smoke through the back of it and it, it looks like it's blown up. That's dead easy. You fancy doing this? Yeah. One of those. Let's get this prank underway. Ninjas! Take us to Prank HQ. The blueprint for Susanna's prank is a bogus high-tech research lab, an invisibility suit, Susanna's disappearing act 
and some self-moving objects, which should all add up to Thomas thinking that Susanna is invisible and even better, he'll think that he is too. Add in some smoke and Thomas should think he's in a whole lot of bother. Thanks, ninjas. Susanna, welcome to Prank HQ. This is where your incredible invisible prank gets created. What do you think? It's great. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Listen, there's a lot to do for this prank. We've got very little amount of time to do it in. So let's get started. This is Steve over here from our special effects department. Steve, Susanna. Susanna, hello. Hi. How are you doing? Now, listen, you're creating the objects for us that are going to make Thomas believe that Susanna's invisible. So, uh, wh how, where are we up to? What yeah, have we got? Yeah, we're trying our best. We've got an awful lot to do. It's work in progress. Firstly, um, I thought if we had a number of stools in our set, we could use a monster truck such as this, and we could use uh, a remote control, and we could do one of those, and we could get it to move independently. Very nice. Number one, hopefully that works out. Number two, if we have uh, a bookshelf, a regular bookshelf, and we could um, fill the shelves with all these books, and then if from behind a wall we could activate. So, oh, like so brilliant. Feel bigger and better. That works really well. Yeah, it's quite effective, isn't it? That's very good. Okay. So far. Yeah, very good. You could probably help me this next stage, actually, if. You got the paint. We'll finish this stool and OK, see yeah. You I'll see another. you guys later. And of course, we're going to meet Lee in a bit as well. He's got some great ideas for the prank. And while they get off and do that, here's one that you can do at home. Recipe for a prank. Hidden treasure. Now, everyone loves hidden treasure. And with today's recipe, we will tell you a way to surprise your friend with just that. All you need is your target's locker code and a whole pile of treasure. We suggest ping pong balls, screwed up newspaper and anything else that you can get your hands on. Then when your target's away, fill their locker with the booty and then lock her up and set sail. Nothing compares to the look on the face of a young scoundrel when they first lay eyes on hidden treasure. Aha! Hey guys, how's it going? All right? Good. Are we all finished? I think we're all right. Oh, beautiful. So we've got the moving chair, the books that fly off the shelf. Mm -hmm. Nice work, Steve. Thanks for that, mate. Follow me over here, Susanna, or I'll follow you. Over here, we've got a very important part of the prank. It's called the Cloak Initiator. Lee, talk us through it. This is Susanna, by the way. Hello. Hi. OK, what I've done is I've built this artist light box and put two really powerful lamps underneath it. Um, we need to jazz it up. So I'm going to get some of these blue neon lights, put them around the side. Nice. Now, we also need somewhere for Thomas to put his hands because he's got to believe that he's being energised, OK, when he touches it. <laughs> Out of this foam, I've got a hand shape. I will obviously do another one a little bit later on. OK. Uh, this will be stuck onto there. He'll put his hands on there. I've also rigged a smoke machine up to it, so in the end, when it all goes drastically wrong, smoke will pour out the back and he'll think that he's broken it. That sounds really cool. That's fantastic. So we're all set to go on the prank? Yep. Beautiful. Hang on a second. Did that, did that chair just move? Who's got the remote control? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, ninjas. Smashing. <laughs> it was. It was smashing. It actually was smashing, and you can say yeah. sm I like what you did there. Now be serious though, fold your arms. We've now got to find our costume for the invisibility suit. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Ninjas. Nope. No. No. Definitely not. Yeah, it looks great. Maybe a few more tweaks. A few more tweaks? Okay, we can sort that out. And I'll get the design boys to do a sign for us as well. In fact, we need to talk about that. What's our company name gonna be? 
If something sounds technical and a bit of electronics. Technical and electronics. Well, techtronics. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Happy with that? Let's do it. So, we've got our invisibility suit. And we've got our company signs. We've got the remote controlled stool and Dr. Bookshelf. And we've got the cloak initiator wired up to the smoke machine ready for the finale. We're all set. Ninjas, load the van and take us to our top secret location. Oh, and if you're wondering how we're going to make somebody invisible, stay tuned. I'll tell you in a bit. Welcome to our Future Technologies and Games Research Facility, known as Techtronics. Cool. That's going to be there in a big sign. On the door, we're going to have a security guy as well. He's going to check you and Thomas into hello, here. Hello, hello, hello. And as you're walking through the main hallway, through the main corridor, on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you'll see some different departments, which we're going to make up. Um, Thomas won't know that, of course. No. Um, we're, we're going to have guys walking around in lab coats with clipboards to make it all look very official and posh as well. Sound OK? That's great. Cool. And can we have a flashing light on the door, too? A flashing light on the door? Yep. Oh, we have to have one of those, yes. In fact, this is the door, just here. Follow me. Now, it's called the prank room, uh, because this is where we're going to pull the actual prank off on Thomas. Now, the first room is very important. It's called the control room. And basically, we're going to bring Thomas into here, and this is where he's going to see you disappear. It's cool, but it needs loads more lights and switches and all that. Stuff. Lights and switches. We can sort all that out. They're sort of like finishing touches. At the moment, they're sort of just building the main room, but that can come later. Um, I, you know, I'm wondering if anybody's actually thought about how we're going to make a person vanish. You know, I was just thinking about how we're actually going to make a person vanish. Well, yeah, right answer. Um, well, basically, um, Thomas has seen you disappearing here already, and that's because of the cloak initiator. Do you remember that? Yeah. The thing with the handprints on it? So, on the control room monitor, Thomas is going to watch what he thinks is live action. In reality, though, we've pre-recorded Susanna in the invisibility suit with her hands on the cloak initiator. Next, we videotape the exact same shot of the room, but without Susanna in it. Now, here's the trick. We take the video of Susanna and put it on top of the video of the empty room. Then, we slowly remove the shot of Susanna until we're left with only the shot of the empty room. It will look like Susanna has faded away. Genius. So we're going to play that footage to Thomas during the prank, and he's going to think that he's seeing it live there and then. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's great. Come on, how are you feeling about the prank? I'm feeling really nervous, but excited as well. Well, I think there's one more thing we need for this prank, just to sort of make it a bit more official, and that's a researcher. Meet Rodney. Hi, Susanna. Hi. Hi, Rodney. Now, this guy's a prank patrol actor. He knows his stuff. But it's up to you to mould the character a little bit and, and make him uh, how you want him to act. So, how about the accent and how he talks? What do you think? Um, I think I want you to be a bit eccentric, but not too over the top. OK. Yeah. How about something like this? Uh, hello, and welcome to Tektronics. Yeah, nice. sounds great. That's nice and official, that. OK, and what about the costume that he's wearing? I think he should wear a white lab coat, something scientific. Right. OK, Rodney, so that is eccentric, not too much. And a white lab coat, please. Get yourself ready for character. Will do. We'll see you in a bit. Good luck with the prank. Now, we've got plenty to do here, Susanna, so let's get to it. And ninjas, you too. Come on. <laughs> Okay, so the ninjas have set everything up. They're all ready to go. I'm ready to go for the prank. It's now time to make the phone call and make sure that Thomas is going to be here for the prank as well, okay? So, what have we told him so far? Um, he thinks that tomorrow he's coming up to test up a new game. He's going to test a new game, yeah. okay? And that's all he knows. Yeah. So, all we've got to do now is give him a call and make sure that he's still going to be here. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Are you nervous? Yeah. I'm a little bit. Okay, then. It's all yours. Hello? Hi, it's Susanna. Um, Hi. It you start for tomorrow, the game testing? Yeah. Yeah, okay, just checking. So right. it's gonna be great. What am I supposed to do anyway? Do I do the movements of the character or something? I don't know yet, I don't I have no idea. But we'll have to see tomorrow. Apparently that's what my mum says. Yeah, I think mum's probably well my mum's not been on the phone to him, so she's probably been talking to your mum, so I well, yeah. I don't know. So So apparently but, that's what we've got to do then? Yeah. Get, I, I can't we, wait. You get, yeah, I think they give you a tracksuit or something and then he'd jump with pads on there. Ace. Okay, so see ya. Alright, see you later. Bye. Oh, well done. 
You handled that pretty well then. I thought it was, I think, he's, I think he saw something. Do you think he might have worked that out? No, I didn't think he would. Even with the suit thing and his mum telling yeah, him and I everything? Think, I think he was just thinking like motion capture. I don't think he... You think so? Yeah. Okay then, well listen, we're going to need some support for this, so let's have a see what your friends and family have got to say. Have a look at this. Ooh. Hi, Susanna, your dad here. Just wishing you well on your prank and hope that it all goes well because you've worked really hard for this. Good luck, Susanna. I hope the prank goes well. Love you. Hi, Susanna, it's your mum here. Good luck. Hope it goes well. You've always wanted to do this. Well, good luck, Susanna. I've still got no name. Ah, plenty of support. That's what we need for this prank. Are you ready for this? Yep. Let's get to it. <laughs> Stay tuned to see how Thomas reacts when he sees Susanna disappear in front of his eyes. Will he believe our made-up equipment? And how will he react when he finds out that it's his best buddy who stitched him up? Keep watching to find out. Susanna, welcome to your finished prank room. You like it? Great. They've worked yep. really hard, haven't they? This, of course, is the bookshelf. We know what that does. The books are going to come up when you're invisible. Uh, behind you here, we've got a few surprises. Um, this is a set of drawers. The drawers are going to come out while you're invisible as well. That clock's going to spin round. Very effective. Um, of course, you recognise the stool. Yeah. That's going to move on its own. Now, this bit, this is behind the cloak initiator, which is just this side of the wall. And that's where all the smoke's going to come flying out from, of course, when that's Thomas great. breaks it. Thomas, by the way, is very close to being here. Uh, in here, you'll recognise one very cool man. Oh, well, that's elementary, my dear Barney. <laughs> Hi, Rodney. <laughs> is that what you had in mind? Yeah. Beautiful stuff, Rodney. Good luck with the prank. Thank you. Of course, the cloak initiator is all set and ready to go. We're going to be covering all the action in the prank with our hidden cameras. There's one in this window just here. Hello. One there. And one over there as well. Hello. So that's it. We're all set. You ready for this? Yep. High five. Ta, follow me. The blueprint for Susanna's prank is a bogus high-tech research lab, an invisibility suit, Susanna's disappearing act, and some self-moving objects which should all add up to Thomas thinking that Susanna is invisible and even better, he'll think that he is too. Add in some smoke and Thomas should think he's in a whole lot of bother. So, here comes Susanna and Thomas now. That's Big Dave, our head of security, and he's going to escort them to Rodney, our prank patrol actor, who's playing Alan the researcher. The ninjas have finished setting all the props in our prank room. Brilliant, let the pranking commence. <laughs> okay. Right, now, would you like to go and sit over here? You sit down over here, Susanna, and you sit over there, Thomas. OK? Probably all looks a lot to you at the moment, doesn't it? Yes. OK. Good. Sit down. OK. Well, my name's Alan Cole. You can call me Alan. I don't mind at all, OK? Yep. Now, it was you that actually filled in the postcard, is that right? Yeah. From another Tectronics game. game. Excellent. OK. And, uh, obviously, both of you are really good fans of... Computer games? Yeah. yeah. Good, well, good, good. OK. Well, tell me, uh, who's actually the best player, would you say, of the two of you? Is it you? Probably me, cos I've played quite a few games. Really? Yeah. Yes, And I like, I like playing them on high difficulties as well. Oh, wow. Excellent. Well, that sounds as if you're a great player. What about you? Um, I think I'm pretty good. Good. Yeah. OK. Let me tell you a little bit about the company. What we're currently working on at the moment, OK, is the latest generation virtual multiplex games, OK? We're trying to blur the boundaries between what is virtual world and what most people consider reality. And we do this through multiplex digital weaving. Mm -hmm. How does that sound to you? Cool. A little bit complicated? Complicated, but good. Excellent. OK. Basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find two people that will work with us because we want to develop a brand new game that we can produce. OK? That's what we want to do. Now, what we have over here is we have these optical expanders. What optical expanders do is they take um, an average 2D video game, OK, and they multiplex it into 3D nanotechnology. Standard yellow safety glasses then, Rodney. OK, now this little fellow over here, this is called a thermal feeler. Soldering okay? iron. And we use this to splice heavy electricity that streams around the atmosphere. OK? There you go. Ah, now this is our pièce de résistance. I don't know if you ever watch any of those behind-the-scenes sort of films, you know, on television, where they show you how they do Hollywood... Yeah, like movies. Movements, absolutely. That is absolutely it. Well, this is 
Sort of the same sort of concept, okay, but it's a lot much more advanced. What happens is you put the suit on and a special light will actually come on, okay? Now, through the refraction of the light, no one can see you. Isn't that amazing? What do you think about that? I tell you what, do you want to try it? Oh, can I try it? You'd like to? Yeah. Really? Okay, well, I don't see why not. And you could try it afterwards, Thomas, if we've got yeah. enough time. It depends what time we've got, okay? Yeah. All right, well, I'll tell you what, you take it into this room over here, Susanna. There we go. Okay, this is well. Don't forget the shoes. Hold on, they're my nan's okay. slippers. Ninjas. There you go. There you go, there's the hat. Okay, now, Thomas, you and I are going to go into the testing room. We're going to take the optical expanders with us. So come into here. There you go. Okay, excellent. Now, you sit over here, sit on this chair. Good. I'm going to give you these optical expanders because you are going to need to use them okay. very shortly. Are you okay, Susanna, there? Yeah. Good. Okay, well, come out whenever you're ready. Okay, but take your time. So keep watching the screen and hopefully she'll come out. Ah, there she is now. You're okay, Susanna? Excellent. Well, give us a wave to show that you're ready. Ah, that's excellent. Okay, now go over to the cloak initiator that's just behind you. Good, and put your hands on it. Okay, now it'll take between five and ten seconds and then it should power up. Okay, now, so give it a few seconds. Watch, ah, oh, excellent. What do you think to that, Thomas? Cool. Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. That's amazing, isn't it? Okay. You're okay, Susanna, are you? Of course, she's okay. She's just hidden behind that curtain. We're going to get into game mode. We're going to put on our optic expanders. OK, now this actually will enhance the, what you perceive, what you see. Yeah. OK. OK, well, the game's on, Susanna. Here we go. Ah, oh, look, look. The curtain, did you see that, the curtain? Yeah. The curtain open, watch. See where she is, Thomas. Have a look around, see if you can see where she is. Where do you think she is? Mm. There! Oh. <laughs> what do you think of that? Oh. We're so excited about this. As I said, it's never been... Oh, look! Look! <laughs> That's great! That is weird. Yes, good. that really is. It's excellent, isn't it? I've never seen, te I've never seen technology like it. No, I know, it's amazing. See where she is. Where do you think she is? Oh, oh look, she's just turned the light off. Oh, oh, she's mischievous. She's playing with the books. <laughs> <laughs> that really is amazing. Can you move the stool for us? Oh, look at that. That's great. Excellent. OK, well done, Susanna. You win. Now, if you'd like to go and get changed, and we'll come through, and it's going to be Thomas's turn. That is weird. Isn't it weird? It's fun too. OK. So, job done for Susanna. Ten out of ten. What a performance. Now it's time to pass the invisibility leotard, uh, uh, I mean suit, to Thomas to see how he'll react to being the invisible man. There you go. Into there and get changed. Well done, Susanna. That was terrific. How did it feel? It felt great. Oh, it was amazing watching it. How are you doing, Thomas? All right. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to look into the monitor straight ahead. Okay. Where's that? Can you see it? It's probably behind you. Can you see it? Yeah. You can see the monitor go. Okay, now look in the monitor. Okay. Now turn to the right. Good. Now turn to the left. Excellent, oh, yeah. you're doing really well. Okay, now I want you to go clockwise, rotate. Right round, 360 degrees. All right? Good. And now anti-clockwise. You see the cloak initiator? Yep. Excellent. Put your hands on it very slowly, nice and easy. And now, as I said before, it takes between five and ten seconds. OK. You work. OK. No. Yes, of course, it's worked, Thomas. You've completely not disappeared at all. This is Prank Patrol. Fantastic. Great. Where is he? There. Where is he? OK, move around, Thomas. Let's see if we can see where you are. Oh, I saw the stool move. Yeah, I saw it. That's fine. right. Let's see what he's doing. Where is he? Ah, oh, the lights have just gone on. Excellent. We've no idea where you are. Now, listen, Thomas, we're going to try something. I don't want you to talk. Don't say a word. We're going to come out and see if we can find you. OK, come on, Susanna. Let's go and see if we can find... Him. Here we go. Now take it easy. Now move about, Thomas, so that we can see if we can find you. 
Oh, I heard something just now. Laser. Is he near the table? Here, somewhere. Wait a minute. Oh my goodness. Oh no, it's the cloak initiator. I, I don't know, I think it's overloading. Look, uh, I'm gonna go, have to go into the control room and isolate it. Susanna, you come with me. Thomas, stand still. Don't move at all. Don't, don't, don't move with the costume wherever you are. Oh, hello, who's this distinguished looking chap now? Is that the caretaker? Or is it me in disguise? Oh, I'm gonna have to do the Hey, okay, isolate. what's going on in here? What's going on with this? Oh, smoke is getting flaming, kids. Here he is, sorted out. What's going on? Hello? Smoke's off. Hi, Thomas. How you doing? You've just been pranked by the prank patrol. Give him a cheer, everyone. Yay! <laughs> that was all Susanna's fault, by the way. Sorry about that, fella. You look great in the suit, by the way. Oh, no, sorry, no, sorry. Thomas, where are you? <laughs> Thomas, I, I'd like to say you look great in the suit, but I, I can't see you. Well played, sport. I think the best bit of the prank was seeing Thomas's face when, when he, he thought he was invisible and then Barney could see him and he was like, well, why can Barney see me if I'm invisible? I think probably the fact that you managed to make the illusion as if Susanna was disappearing on the screen. Right, that was pretty funny, I'd say. Believable as well. My favourite bit of prank was when Thomas was uh, in control room, you know, and he saw Susanna disappear. If you get a close-up of his face, you'll see it go like this. He goes... Wow, it's like he's almost, he's, oh my, I can get out of character now, hello. Um, that for me was the best bit of the prank because, you know, he just, um, he was totally buying it at that point. And I think as soon as that starts to happen, you know the rest of the prank is going to go brilliantly. Susanna was wonderful. I thought she was very professional. She seemed to know exactly what she wanted and she went for it. And uh, it worked really well right through. Very, very realistic. If I saw somebody disappear, would I believe it? Do you know what? I would. I'm actually quite a gullible person. Uh, and I think the way that we did it, the way, I just think the whole look of the place, you've got the blue lights, you know, you've got the curtain that goes back as if by magic, the things that fall off the shelf, yeah, I, I'd have bought that. And he did too. When Barney came in with the brush and started hitting the box, I thought that, that was really funny. Because um, the fact that someone was smashing a box that, was over, that I thought was overloading, it was just unbelievable, really. Yet another successful prank. We just love it when a prank comes together. Oh, oh, can you feel that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. See you later. Whoa. He actually thought I was invisible. I will trust her again, yeah. I don't think he'll trust me. I probably won't trust him now. I want to say to Thomas, you've been well and truly pranked by the prank patrol. <laughs> <laughs>